Hey there, welcome to my tutorial series for Tom Clancy's Plunder Cell Pandora tomorrow. This series will cover all levels and their any% percent routes, as well as recommendations for setting up the game to run as smoothly as possible for speedrunners. In this video, I'll talk about various game tweaks, as well as the live split setup. If you're interested in only a particular part of this video, I'll leave the timestamps in this video's description. One of the most important things you can download for this game is the widescreen fix by 13AG. It fixes the aspect ratio issues when on widescreen and allows you to play at HD resolutions. It also fixes a pesky problem with night vision. Normally, for some reason, it only renders at the lowest resolution, regardless of your actual resolution. But with widescreen fix, this problem gets solved and now your game won't look crappy during some of the most critical situations. You can download the widescreen fix from the author's website. Link in the description. Once downloaded, drag and drop all of the contents from the system folder into your game directory's system folder of the same name, as shown in the video. Once you're done, you're pretty much good to go. Another big issue is the broken lighting. Now, if you play with the widescreen fix, your lighting issues should get resolved. But if you're not using it, or if the issues still persist, you might want to enable an alternative fix. I'll leave a link in the description for you to download it. Make sure to read about it on the author's website. To install it, simply drag and drop the downloaded file into the system folder of your game's directory. Another important thing is your FPS. You're allowed to lock your FPS to a certain limit, aka the FPS cap. But keep in mind that it is against the rules to change the FPS cap mid-run. This means that if you set your max FPS to 100, you may not reduce that limit to, say, 30 FPS max, and then put it back to 100. If you start with the 100 FPS limit, you must run the entire game with it. But you might be wondering, why should I cap my game if I can easily run 200 FPS and more? The answer lies in the game's stability and trick performance. What I mean by that is, for example, the lower your FPS, the harder it is to perform the dilly out of bounds skip, which requires to glitch out a certain collision. On the other hand, overly high FPS can result in UI issues like this tooltip bar moving like crazy, or even break AI pathfinding. The middle ground here lies at about the 100 to 120 FPS range. This is high enough to make the necessary tricks doable and not break the AI. To enable this cap, you need to go to your GPU's control panel, in my case, NVIDIA control panel, and select the game's EXE file and find a line that says max frame rate or something along those lines. I personally have it set at 100, but you can experiment with whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Save the changes, and you're good to go. You may want to disable the mouse acceleration option, which is present whenever you aim your weapon. It may hinder your ability to aim quickly and precisely. If you wish to disable this feature, go to your game's folder, click offline, then go to your system folder and open a file called esetting.ini. Use Control F and type use aim tuning. There should be 9 results. Make sure that you set all V equals 1 fields to V equals 0. Then, save the changes and you're done. Now that optimizations are out of the way, let's talk about some issues you may run into while running this game. First of all, if the mouse and menu screens feels like it's locked to a grid both horizontally and vertically, this is normal. For some reason, the game uses angle snapping for your mouse in all menus and unfortunately, there is no fix for that as of me recording this video. Secondly, crashes. This is a big one, especially for speedrunners, but there are a couple of known spots where you can encounter crashes. The first one is at the very end of Jerusalem Part 1. Here, as you're loading into the second part, your game may crash without explanation or any error screens. I used to suffer from this issue a lot, and to be honest, I have no clue what fixed it. If you follow the latest Jerusalem skip route that I cover in this tutorial series, you should be good to go. You also want to avoid quick saving until the next part of the level from right as you reach this area. 
basically from here onwards. Quick saving can cause a crash here as well. As a safety precaution, you might want to consider restarting the game every time you pass that section. Another problematic part is this retinal scanner door area in TV station. If you quick save going from here onwards, in this general area where you fight the guards, the game will eventually crash. The best case scenario is to avoid reverting to quick saves if you can, or make one slightly earlier before going through the slide doors. You may also crash during cutscenes, however, if you skip through them fast enough, you shouldn't encounter the crashes. There is a recommended fix for this on the PC Gaming Wiki, to which I'll leave a link in the description. Now with all that out of the way, let's move on to Life Split. Life Split is a powerful timer tool that allows you to time your runs, structure it into segments, and most importantly, use auto splitters and load removal programs to help you in getting all kinds of times necessary for the leaderboards. As of me recording this video, the speedrun.com leaderboards for Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow use RTA, or Real Time Attack, timing method, which requires no load removal. However, it is strongly encouraged to use the auto splitter program, as it will automatically start and end the timer at the exact moment it's supposed to. For top tier competitive times, especially the world record run, you should manually retime your run to ensure the most accurate result possible. Anyway, back to Live Split. You can download Live Split from their website, livesplit.org. To set up the splits, right click on the Live Split window and click Edit Splits. From here, use Insert Above and Insert Below and Remove Segment buttons to add or remove segments. You'll need 8 splits if you're going to only split per level, or 17 if you'd like to split per every loading screen. Up above, enter the game's name in the Game Name field and choose it from the drop-down menu. Make sure to select your appropriate category as well. If you wish to run any percent on PC, just choose the PC option from the menu. Next, you will see Auto Splitter available here. Make sure you press Activate on the right. You may also want to open the settings and tweak them. For example, if you have 17 segments, make sure to enable Subsplits option. If you don't want your timer resetting to zero per every reset, uncheck the Reset option. If you run an individual level, make sure to choose IL mode. Once you're done, close the window and hit OK in the Splits Editor window. And that's it, you're ready to start speedrunning Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. But before you do, make sure to check out the rest of the series for tutorials of every level and the most important skips and tricks. Should you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, or you can join our Splinter Cell speedrunning Discord, where we're more than happy to answer any and all of your questions. Until then, thank you, and have fun speedrunning!